Ignite is an ongoing series of speedy presentations. They range from building multi-person pogo sticks to hacking chocolate. Any topic the geeks hold dear. Each speaker gets only five minutes and 20 slides at auto advance every 15 seconds. Hi, I'm James Fowler and I study real world social networks. Um, I want to start with a slide that um, indicates um, what was going on in India a long time ago. Um, what we found was that there was a really hard time starting this talk. <laughs> but he was really trying to motivate these normal people, these everyday people, to stand up against the British government. And so he told each one of them, you must be the change you wish to see in the world. And so what does that have to do with this? This question, do your friends make you fat? This is about friends. And Nicholas Christakis and I, we've studied these large-scale, real-world social networks in the Framingham Heart Study. 32 years, um, 5,000 people, we've followed these people in their networks, and what we've done is we've started to study their health behaviors. And so this is a, an example of one of these networks. The yellow nodes are people who are obese, the red nodes are people who are normal weight, the blue lines are our connections, uh, real-world connections between those people. And we found that not only is it the case that your friends influence one another, it's also the case that your friends' friends, and even your friends' friends' friends, can influence your weight. If I don't know anything about you, but I know your friend's friend's friend is obese, I can do better than chance of predicting whether or not you'll be obese. And this is true not just for obesity, it's true for a wide array of health behaviors and emotional outcomes. Um, we've also looked on Facebook, and here, your thousand Facebook friends is not going to make you fat, but your real friends who are on Facebook, the people that you upload a picture of and tag, when we look at these networks, we find the same patterns, actually, of, of um, overweight whenever we classify the pictures there. Um, we've looked at smoking cessation. So smoking, there was a lot of smoking in 1971, and it's gone way down to the, to the current day. And here we find that the effects are so strong, it's actually affecting the structure of the network. As smokers get pushed to the outside of the networks, and the network polarizes between uh, smokers and non-smokers. Um, drinking. Drinking again is spreads out to three degrees of separation, and we find something really interesting here. It's the women who control who drinks. Um, so you might think about it as you're walking around this evening later tonight. Um, now, one of the things that we wanted to do whenever we started looking at these health behaviors is try to figure out well, what's going on in, in different kinds of behaviors. And so we found that, for example, in adolescents, that sleep loss can spread as well. If your friend starts losing sleep, you're more likely to lose sleep as well, and that trans helps to transmit your likelihood of engaging in risky behaviors like smoking marijuana. Um, we've also looked at emotional states like happiness, and so here we have yellow people are, are, uh, in, uh, are happy, blue, blue nodes are actually unhappy, and we find these clusters again extend out to three degrees of separation. This is in the Framingham Heart Study, but we also looked at smiling in profile pictures and not smiling in profile pictures on Facebook. <laughs> and again, what do we find? We find these clusters extend to three degrees of separation, um, just like we did in these real-world social networks when we looked at the picture friends on Facebook. Um, finally, we looked at tastes on Facebook as well, and so we've looked at the, the movie taste, um, taste in authors, taste in music, and one of the things that we find here is we find the spread, again, after three years of separation, that it spreads in different parts of the network. So if you like Pulp Fiction, chances are you're at the center of the network. Um, we've done experiments um, in the laboratory to see how generosity spreads. And if you give an extra dollar to somebody and someone sees that, you'll give more, the person who sees you will give more, and the person who sees them will give more. It spreads to three degrees of separation. Every dollar you give the first time actually gets tripled in the network. So if the networks are this powerful, what happened to free will? You could be like this guy and just give up and say, well, my friends are making me fat. There's nothing I can do about it. These network studies actually have a different message than that. And it's very, very important to realize that some of these cartoonists got our study wrong. And so here's one in particular that seems to be indicating that you should dump your fat friends. And nothing could be further from the truth. Every friend makes you healthier, every friend makes you happier. A wide variety of research shows this. And so how does this work? <laughs> the way this works is that you get other kinds of support. Yes, they're a bad influence on you, but overall they provide other things for you that are going to help you to achieve your health goals. When we compared the dumpers to the keepers in the premium heart study, it was the dumpers who were more likely to become obese in the future. Now here's a cartoon that actually got it right, so shockingly it's Kathy. Um, they're a little bit concerned about the, the study, and they're talking about you know, whether or not they're going to actually maintain their friendship. And at, at the end, what they realize is that rather than worrying about whether or not they're going to stay friends, they need to order for each other. She'll have a dry salad and a cup of water. And the reason why they do this is because the friends that you uh, surround yourself with, if you can help them have good behaviors, it reinforces your own good behaviors. In fact, some studies suggest that your friends' friends are also important to this, to this kind of process. 
And so I actually had a transformation myself as a result of doing this research. I realized uh, when we did the obesity study that this, these network effects were really important. I lost five pounds, I kept it off, and why? It's because I realized that when I become healthier, I'm helping my son, potentially my son's best friend and my son's best friend's mother. You, each of us needs to realize our own network power because when we do that, we're going to realize that we don't just affect ourselves, we affect dozens, in some cases, hundreds of other people, some of whom we don't know and have never met. And so what I'd really like to do is I'd like to implement Gandhi's vision and make each of you in the world aware that you're not in it alone. When you do something positive, it's going to affect you, your friends, your friends' friends, and your friends' friends' friends, and you must be the change you wish to see in your network. Thank you.